<clears throat> the blessing of, of water is something that's unique to, to Christianity. Every, I'm sure all people give, are, gra- are grateful for water and are thankful for it in many ways, but the particular sanctification of water and the use of holy water is unique to us. It's something that we take very seriously and that we put to use. It's something that is useful for us. It's an application of our faith and our understanding in our daily lives that touches us, that we can feel. We might even wince when the water comes our way. But it's something that's tangible. It's something that we can interact with physically. This is what we do. We bless physical things because God blessed creation by his creating it, right? God said that it was good. He also, becoming a human being in time, and our Lord Jesus Christ, blessed creation. And in his baptism, he blessed the waters. Baptism was a washing of sins that people would go into the water to be cleansed of their sins to be purified for the forgiveness of their sins. But Jesus had no sin. He was God. So he didn't need to be baptized. So the water did nothing for him when he went into the water. He had no sins to be wiped away. So why was he baptized? Because being God Almighty, the creator of the universe, the creator of the water itself, he blessed the water instead of the water blessing him. He blessed the water. In the ancient understanding of the world, which is prevalent even in in the Orthodox Church today, which we may not always realize, is that water is a very dangerous thing. The people of Israel crossed through the Red Sea, right? And they were spared. But they saw behind them Pharaoh and his chariots and his soldiers and his armies drowned in the sea. People would go fishing, and they wouldn't go across the Mediterranean. They would just go along the coast, because water was, it's it's uncontrollable. It's chaotic. Water is, especially bodies of water, is something that is a threat. It's chaotic. It's disordered. But God comes, and he blesses the water, and he orders it. He gives it purpose. He justifies it. He gives it order and its place in the world. Water is also important for all of us. We need it to survive. It's one of those things. It's dangerous in live water, I guess you could say. But it's also so important for us to ingest. And so we have the holy water that is not just regular water. Yes, if you were to look at it under a microscope... It would still be two hydrogen molecules and one oxygen molecule, H2O. We didn't change the the chemical structure of the water. What we did is we called God to send down his Holy Spirit upon the water to transform it mystically into a source of blessing for us. Really, what we do with holy water is we change our perspective towards it. Because by its presence, being sprinkled upon us, being sprinkled in the homes, being ingested, being anointed by it, we call to our own consciousness and our own presence, God himself, within us and around us. The story, I was on vacation this summer, my wife and I, and we went to, a, to an Airbnb and stayed there. And the first night, we had the worst dreams. Terrible, terrible dreams. Just the worst. And we don't usually remember our dreams. But they were memorable and they were disturbing for both of us. And we realized this was a place. We don't know who owns this place. We don't know what the people who own this place believe. We don't know what the people who stayed here before us believe or do or practice or who they worship because who we worship comes with us. 
and we felt a, an evil presence in the Airbnb, of all things. And so, conveniently, I'm a priest, so we did an Agiasmo, we did a blessing of the holy water. I didn't have my vestments with me, but we did kind of a, 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 a small version and we called God to come down upon us and to, through this water, banish away any evil spirits in our presence. We sprinkled the holy water. Who knows what the neighbors heard us singing, and they were probably confused, but who cares? We sprinkled the water, and we didn't feel that disturbance the rest of our time staying there. There are evil spirits in the world, and we have to know that that's true. But we also know that nothing is more powerful than our Lord Jesus Christ. And when we bring his presence into our lives, he puts everything in order. He puts it in its place, like he cleans the house. Everything is in its place, how it's supposed to be. And so my encouragement to you today is to take the holy water seriously, not because it's magical, but that by the effort, by the power of your prayer, of your faith, this holy water can clean your house also, the house of your soul. It can transform the world around you to be dedicated to our Lord Jesus Christ, to worshiping the Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, to be dedicated to the one true Almighty God and not to anything else, and so that's why we bless our homes also. Because while we not, may not intentionally be worshiping demonic powers in our homes, I hope we're not doing that, we do sin in our homes. We move away from God. And as we move away from Him, the space also loses its proximity to Christ. So we bless our homes every year to cast out anything that's in there to cleanse the space, to purify the space, to remove any trace of sin from the space so that we can live in a clean house, a clean house that is oriented, directed towards worshiping our Lord Jesus Christ. So please call the office and we'll get you on a list to schedule your home blessing. I'd love to come and bless your homes and to sprinkle the holy water and to pray with you. This is an important part of what we do in the church year as Orthodox Christians. And I pray that this year is a blessed year, full of holiness, full of health, and full of joy. We wish Kronia Pola to everyone today. God bless and keep you all.